We're at Clemson University at the Bob and Betsy Campbell Museum of Natural History. I'm with Melissa Fuentes, who's the curator here. And tell us what this museum is all about. So this museum is geared towards what it looks like, uh, vertebrate collections. So we have many animals from around the world specifically to cater to students and researchers that want to come in and look at animals that they wouldn't be able to see in the, in the wild otherwise. And fortunately, since of course professors are always getting and collecting things, you mm -hmm. had several professors who had amassed fairly large collections. I believe Dr. Worms was a fish specialist. Oh yes, yes. He specialized in the study of embryology in fish. So whenever he would study a certain species, he would collect the animals that he studied and he would donate them to the university. So we have about close to 20,000 or more specimens he alone donated to the collection. And then there's someone who's still very active in collecting. That's right, uh, Dr. Blobe. Um, he's also, without him, this museum wouldn't be what it is today. He's helped us immensely in gathering and housing and storing most of the specimens that you will see. Another person important in the history of this museum mm -hmm. was Stan Lee, that was his first name, yes. Miller, who became the curator, but he himself went out and collected all the time. Oh yes, vast. He focused mostly on song songbirds and warblers, but he would reach out to zoos and other universities and museums, and they, we acquired so many specimens thanks to him. And the one that was just an amazing occurrence was when he talked to the York County Museum. Yes, the York County Museum and us are in very good standing, really good relationship with them. They donated about 90% of the animals mounted or specimen wise that we have. So to give back, we are now donating animals that we've recently done uh, native to the Piedmont and South Carolina area. That's that way, their new focus. Oh yes, yes, that is their new focus, yes. So we are giving back to them animals that they wouldn't be able to have otherwise. And you have many, many of those animals that are, would be found in this area, mm -hmm. but the backbone of their collection came from the Mellon family of yes. great wealth. And so this collection includes things from every continent, every square foot of the world. Exactly right, yes. And many of them are mounted, which is good for the students and researchers that come in so they can see what they look like alive, instead of having them just in a flat skin. But there are different ways of preserving things. Let's talk about some of those ways. Of course. So there are study skins, which are animals filled with cotton batting. Then there are taxidermy mounts. So it's typically what you see your, your parents or your grandparents having hung on the wall. So a white-tailed deer hung or any animal that's been stuffed with foam. And they'll have little glass eyes. That's and right. And look very live and realistic. Absolutely right. right. And then we have simple skins, just a flat hide that doesn't really have any physical characteristics, but you can see what the animal is. The pattern, what the mm -hmm. hair texture Exactly like. right. And then skeletons are also very important. Also, yes. We actually have a colony of dermestid beetles, which are flesh-eating beetles. So everything that we do, we do in-house. We, we preserve, we conserve, we restore, we beetle clean, and we repair. Mercy. <laughs> and you yourself are a taxidermist. Yes, that's right. I've been doing it for about nine years now. And you explained to me that when we look at something and see the veins in the neck, you often get a mount mm -hmm. that's just kind of the bare bones of what the animal is like, and everything else has to be reproduced by you yes. acting as a sculptor, and fortunately you had a background <laughs> in art. I do, I do. I have a background in, in art with a major in sculpting, so every muscle, every vein, every little wrinkle and fold has to be put in by hand. And that's done right here. Yes, that is. Absolutely. And one of the wonderful things is in your relationship with some of the other institutions mm -hmm. with whom you have trading back and forth and, and reciprocity, you can sometimes help them if they don't have that, that ability. Absolutely right. And most of the time, we are grateful that we do have these facilities. Many other places don't. So we offer our hand in help. They help us, we help them. They get to help their students and anyone else that benefits from having these kinds of animals there. We benefit because I now have volunteers that I'm training to become conservators and preparators. And could you use more volunteers? Absolutely. <laughs> um, I think I'd like to talk a little bit about um, Mr. Campbell mm -hmm. because I think it's such an interesting story. He was yes. a South Carolinian who graduated from Clemson, went off mm -hmm. to the war, um, and then started a very important mining company mm -hmm. and became very wealthy. And he and his wife wanted to um, show their appreciation of Clemson. The Geology Museum is named mm -hmm. for Mr. Campbell. That's right. But this museum is named for both, and why is that? <laughs> Mrs. Campbell was very adamant about women's rights. Women's rights to attend universities, to have higher paying jobs, to be able to afford things that they couldn't otherwise. So when it came to naming this museum, it's not 
the Bob Campbell Museum. It's the Bob and Betsy Campbell Museum of Natural History. <laughs> now, you work with professors here on campus, but you work with groups in other places too. Yes. Apparently, we have a wonderful ability to share and let people learn from these specimens in other places. That's right. We not only deal with university students, we also deal with elementary kids, high school kids, any age group and even families that want to come and have a private tour of the museum. So if we get called out on assignment, we pack up as many specimens as we can, focusing on what the students are focusing on. So if they're learning food webs, we take animals that are relative to that and we take the museum to them. And in many cases, you've got, um, you have the, the animal that's been taxidermied, mm -hmm. you may have the skin, you may have some of the bones from mm -hmm. the animal, and in the case of birds, you may have the eggs. Oh yes, absolutely. We have several specimens that are here throughout the museum with eggs inside or eggs on the side of them so you can see the relationship between egg and how it fits inside the body of the bird. Well, and how that kiwi gets that <laughs> egg out is still a great mystery to me, and I'm so glad that I don't oh, have yeah. to see it in action. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Um, I just think we are so very fortunate and of course many of the things are not on display and many of the things need to be updated um, and it's just a great task oh, yeah. and I think that we are so fortunate that you're here and also within this facility you've got a wonderful com companion Dixie Damrell who's in charge of the herbarium. Yes exactly right we are grateful to have her. The herbarium is one of the largest in South Carolina so it's a wonderful research tool actively used uh, by anyone in the state or out of state that they can come and research plants and see where plants have been found and if any new species have been found as well. And this is well worth a drive and y'all <laughs> apparently are so accommodating at welcoming people when they come. So if people want to come and visit with you, what's the best way to get in touch with you? The best way would be through email. So it would be my email, F-U-E-N-T-E, the number two, at clemson.edu. And if not, look us up in our catalog. It would be under Biological Sciences. We're all listed there. Give us <laughs> give us your information and we'll we'll book a tour. Well, and the next time I get an animal that's very interesting, I'm going to put it in the freezer and bring it right up to you. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> you can't get enough. Cannot. Thank you so much for an Thank amazing you. visit. Thank you and come again. Please. <laughs>